In many ways, a skilled archer has much in common with today's ophthalmic surgeon. He also has to hit his target with precision when choosing an appropriate toric lens power and axis for his patients undergoing cataract surgery. I've advocated imaging, registration, and even wavefront aberometry to identify and confirm the target meridian. Yet I must confess that even with perfect alignment, the refractive outcome is not always predictable. One of the problems with current toric calculators is that they often use a constant ratio between the intraocular lens power and the corneal astigmatism, uh, and that's not true. It is a varying power that depends upon the effective lens position and the spheroequivalent power of the IOL. Even more important than assuming a constant ratio when calculating the effective vector force for the toric lens is to directly measure and understand the role of the posterior cornea as it plays a much bigger role than we ever had imagined. In planning for the toric IOL, I do account for approximately half a diopter of posterior corneal astigmatism or measure that with available technology. However, I do find the latter to be both cumbersome and not entirely predictable. I would have to agree with all the expert suggestions and certainly improved technology has improved our accuracy both with archery and toric IOLs. But something is missing. Our understanding of the true nature of the corneal curvature and its contribution to astigmatism began with the development of the keratometer by Javel in 1881. Louis-Emile Javel was a well-known 19th century ophthalmologist practicing in Paris when he first noted that he could not account for total ocular astigmatism by simply measuring the power of the anterior cornea with his newly invented javel shiots keratometer. This phenomenon is known as Javel's rule and is thought to be due to the posterior cornea contributing on average a half diopter against the rule astigmatism. Doug Koch, in his Innovators Lecture in 2012, further noted that posterior corneal astigmatism increased with increasing amounts of with the rule, but showed no relationship with against the rule astigmatism, measured from the anterior corneal surface. Doesn't that strike you as strange? Why would a cornea behave in such a fashion? How can you hope to predict the correct toric lens or indeed the flight of an arrow without understanding the underlying reasons for the observed behavior. Natural philosophy is the study of nature and the physical universe and remains the foundation for finding solutions to unexplained observations. The Royal Society here in London was founded as a meeting place for natural philosophers in the 17th century. It is only when Sir Isaac Newton, arguably the most famous fellow of the Royal Society, developed his key insights into the nature of gravity and proposed the three laws of motion that we are now able to precisely predict the flight of an arrow. He demonstrated that it was indeed possible to predict an outcome using a mathematical model and this is precisely what I have done in developing an improved toric calculator. The cornea has a unique architecture. The horizontal diameter is almost always greater than the vertical and the radius of the posterior cornea is therefore steeper than the horizontal. A key feature of my universal formula is that it predicts a ciliary diameter. This enables me to construct a horizontal and vertical corneal diameter and derive the posterior corneal curvature for each eye. The calculator uses vector maths and the required toric lens power can be accurately calculated from the effective lens position. I have created an online program so that anyone can use the improved calculator at apacrs.org.
We now have formulae that are predictable for all axial lengths as well as post-refractive surgery. But predicting post-op refraction with toric IOLs is more complex as both the cylinder power and axis have to be taken into account. I conducted a study with my fellow Adi Abulafia in patients who had a toric lens implanted. Patients were refracted and the keratometry measured using the lens star or IOL master. After dilating, the axis of alignment was determined at the slit lamp. From this data, it is possible to calculate the prediction error using different toric calculators, as the study method excludes errors in axis alignment as well as the contribution of surgically induced astigmatism. All calculators use polar to Cartesian mapping, but there are significant differences in the methods. The toric calculator on the Alcon website assumes a constant ratio when calculating the corneal vector of the toric lens irrespective of the effective lens position or toric lens power. When displayed on a double plot, the centroid or prediction error had a value of 0.52 diopters. Only 33.8% of patients would end up within a half of a diopter of intended astigmatism using this calculator. The Holiday Calculator does use a variable ratio when converting the toric cylinder power to the corneal plane. Nevertheless, the results were similar, with only 35% of patients within a half of a diopter of predicted astigmatism. The Barrett Calculator uses the universal formula to calculate the effective lens position and the corneal vector of the intended toric IOL as well as a value for the posterior cornea. The centroid for the new calculator was essentially zero, with 72% of patients within a half of a diopter of predicted astigmatism. The new calculator proved to be more accurate, even when the posterior cornea was taken into account with a Baylor nomogram or actually measured with a pentacam. When an archer misses the mark, he turns and looks for the fault within himself. Similarly, with toric intraocular lenses, Failure to hit the target is never the fault of the implant. To improve your aim, improve yourself and use an improved calculator. And remember, the arrow is an extension of your soul.